heavy ass denim is what I've got here today. This is Nick from Stridewise.com in Brooklyn, New York with an Australian accent. And today I'm going to be reviewing one of the most iconic and most beloved Japanese raw denim brands of all time, Ironheart. Ironheart was founded in 2003, they're headquartered in Hachiyoji, Japan, and they are founded by Shinichi Haraki after he spent 20 years working in the Japanese garment industry. They are very well known for their very smooth and heavyweight denim, and it's a favorite of the Japanese motorcyclist community. The idea being that, you know, it's meant to help you protect your legs better than a lot of these thinner denims out there. Now, the extent to which that's going to make a difference if you spin out on your motorbike at 50 miles an hour is up for debate, but nonetheless, the denim really is very thick, very sturdy, very rigid, and when you're walking around in a pair of these bad boys, it really feels like you have armor on your legs. Now, as is the case with a lot of Japanese boot brands and other Japanese denim brands, the product has its roots in this really interesting relationship that Japanese fashion has with like 1950s Americana, but in a very Japanese way, they've taken that product that used to be popular here in the 50s, brought it over to Japan and really perfected it and made the product like more robust than you might've ever been able to find it on your own. Ironheart itself really has a very rapid following online. The hashtag Ironheart Army is a favorite and it has like 20,000 posts on Instagram. And this here is the 633N heavyweight denim from Ironheart. So let's take a look at what it really looks like. So this is organic cotton, and it's important to note that it's dyed using natural indigo. Normally denim is made with synthetic indigo, which is cheaper and faster to make, but this is indeed made from indigo fairer plants. The good news and the bad news with this denim, and this is partly because of the natural indigo, is that it takes a super long time to fade. Most of my jeans, like by the time I've worn them as much as I've worn these, they're very significantly lighter around the crotch, but as you can see here, it hasn't really happened here. Uh, so that's a good or bad thing based on your own perspective. And when it does fade, these jeans look more vintage than like really high contrast. So it has a very rich color and that's achieved by rope dyeing the warp yarns in a natural indigo bath. That's the warp, the weft is beige. So as they get older, they'll get ever so slightly dusty looking. So it's a very common look with denim as a very common like sort of a combination of colors like the indigo and the beige. But with natural indigo, again, it's pretty stubborn. So they won't fade all that fast. Now, when I bought these, they said that they were 20 ounce denim because Einhard is known for their 20 ounce denim, but they're not. These are actually 17 ounces, but that's still heavyweight denim. Einhard is known for their particularly tight weave versus something like Samurai or Oni, which use a looser weave. And tighter weaves make the denim seem heavier, which is why this feels like a 21 ounce denim. It's very sturdy. It's very vintage. It's very thick. It's very smooth. If you're after nutty, slubby, irregular denim, uh, like Oni again, the kind of denim that's more trendy now, you're out of luck. This is the kind of denim you could wear 70 years ago and still fit in. Now, as far as the details go, there's not a ton to talk about. It's a pretty simple product. The idea is for the denim to speak for itself. There are a couple of things I want to draw attention to though. The Selvage ID line is red, which is pretty cool. It's a nice little splash of color. It also has dual tone stitching. At first glance, you'd look at this, you might think that it was just gold stitching, but actually it alternates between gold and yellow, which is something some people call like a lemon tea combination. And that's like a nice little subtle texture to the overall jeans themselves. On the back product, they have what some people call dark, arcs, dark arcs, if you didn't have my ridiculous accent. Uh, that's this really subtle stitching on the, black, on the back pocket that you can't really see unless you're looking close into it. But similar to the dual tone stitching, it's like something that you can appreciate, something you don't really notice unless you get really up close with the jeans. But what is not super subtle is this W on the back pocket, which at first I thought was a zigzag, but actually it's the W for Works Inc, which is the company that sort of owns Ironheart. So this is like sort of the trademark of the brand. If you see this, you know you've got a guy who's in the Ironheart army. Now, when it comes to taking care of this denim, obviously uh, what I have to say first is that no one can agree on how often you should wash your jeans, especially when it's raw selvage denim like this, and especially this type of raw selvage denim, which is a very sturdy, very hardy, very rigid, very tough. Uh, it's the kind of stuff you can definitely go 30 wears without washing, maybe 60, maybe 90, and a lot of guys will only wash them once or twice a year. I'm not gonna really make a statement either way. For me personally, when they feel musty, I wash them. That's kind of how I go about it. And what many people will find heretic, they actually recommend you putting it in a washing machine and a dryer. The instructions actually say, wash separately because the indigo might bleed onto your clothes. Uh, lukewarm water, no bleach, tumble dry warm. Don't dry clean it and to iron warm, not like very, very hot. 
But when I spoke to Stealth Edge uh, and also other guys who have Ironheart jeans, they tell me they washed them on cold uh, on their own and they line dry them. The line drying seems to be something you want to do because a lot of people are worried that putting it in the dryer, even if it's not especially hot in the dryer, it's going to cause the jeans to shrink. Now this is sanferized denim, it's not unsanferized, so they're not as likely to shrink as dramatically as unsanferized denim, but nonetheless, yeah, just like, I think line dry it, maybe in the shade. So normally I like jeans with a pretty roomy thigh and pretty roomy butt, but this year I got sick and I lost about 20 pounds, so now this straight leg jean fits me pretty well. Uh, I prefer a pretty dramatic taper. This does taper, not as much as I would have liked it to, but it does nonetheless taper. The idea with a 633N fit is that it provides the mobility of a straight leg with the uh, nice, perhaps more fashionable taper of a slim jean. The 633 is sort of like a sequel to their more famous 634, which is more of like a straight leg look. Now the waist fits true to size, I would say. Like it's not a vanity fit. And I know that because for most of my adult life, I've been a 32 inch waist, but it was probably actually more like a 33 inch waist because most brands, they like to lie to you and tell you the jeans are smaller than they actually are. Uh, but these, I have lost 20 pounds this year and this 32 inch waist, I just barely managed to squeeze into. I managed to, but I'm gonna know delusions that this is a vanity fit. It's like actually 32 inches. So, you know, measure your actual waist before you buy these jeans. And of course this is very, very rigid, very sturdy, very thick denim. So uh, the break in period, not super fun. It took about three weeks of continuous wear before like the waist had stretched maybe a half inch and it felt a bit more comfortable. But the general consensus is that these don't stop breaking in for nine months, maybe a year after you buy them. Like it is hard denim to tame and it's sort of like the guys who really like a tough break in on their boots. Like once you get there, very comfortable, but you really have to put in the work with these jeans. Now, as far as the price goes, a pair of these guys is gonna cost you about 350 bucks. Uh, when I got them here in New York City, they were $325, but after tax and everything, it was like $353. Online, about the same. Uh, I even went to the British Ironheart website and now when you translate the pounds over to USD, it's like 350 to $360. So that's about the price you're looking at here. Now that is pricey. So over 300 bucks for a pair of jeans. Uh, if you are not a big fan of uh, raw salvage denim, then uh, you're gonna get a lot of people thinking that's a ridiculous amount of money to pay for a pair of pants. Uh, even for these sorts of jeans, uh, yeah, three to 350 bucks, I'll accept that. I don't love it, but I don't consider it ludicrously overpriced. But one thing that's really important to note here is that these are natural indigo dyed, it's not synthetic indigo. So for natural indigo dyed jeans, it's a pretty good price. And it's like a, you know, I wouldn't say bargain, but it's very reasonably priced. But you have to kind of care that it's natural indigo. Like that's, that has to be a priority for you if you're going to think this is a good deal. So why should you consider getting a pair of these jeans? Ironheart jeans, like in general, it's a very sort of clean denim. It's pretty trendy right now. A lot of the other jeans I've looked at, like Studio Dartisan, they have like irregular weaves, they have a very like slubby, nutty, uh, nappy kind of texture. This is a really, really clean, clean look and it's very, very rigid denim. So it's more timeless in that respect, if that makes sense. Um, and they're very like protective, like they're very thick, they're very rigid, they're very, very durable. And Ironheart in general has like a bigger emphasis on durability than a lot of other brands out there. Like the stitching I believe is like poly cotton, so it makes it a bit more durable. Little things like that, they're really, really tough jeans and they take a long time to fade as well, which could be a con, I'll get into that in the next section. I also wanted to point out uh, Ironheart, they have this new thing where they offer lifetime repairs on any of their jeans, which is like pretty unheard of in this world. That's gonna be a big upside for a lot of guys. And then finally, uh, it is naturally indigo dyed. Now, a lot of guys don't care about that, but I think it's a pretty cool touch and for natural indigo dyed Japanese jeans, it's a pretty good price. Now, there are some downsides to Ironheart jeans. Uh, the price, I mean, look, unless you're like really into raw denim and really into natural indigo, 350 bucks, that is pricey for a pair of jeans. Uh, it's also stubborn to fade for a lot of guys, maybe most guys, maybe all guys who get into this sort of denim. The idea is to wear it long, wear it hard, and like after a, you know, a long time, you'll accrue some very nice like high contrast fades. These are sorts of jeans, they take a super, super long time to fade. Uh, now that's gonna keep the aesthetic nice and clean for as long as possible, if that's something you like. It keeps them like, you know, sort of dressy on the dressy side of jeans in that respect. Um, but if you're one of these guys who's really, really into fading, you have to wait like a pretty long time for these to start fading. And on that note, 
They take a long time to break in as well. Uh, again, pretty much everyone agrees, you're gonna have to wait months for them to get like really comfortable, six, nine, maybe 12 months, for them to really, really conform around the shape of your body. Again, a lot of guys like that. A lot of guys, they're not gonna really have the patience. They'll be like a bit annoyed at how much patience they have to show when they're trying to break in these jeans. Finally, and this is obviously very subjective like most of this stuff is, but some people find Einhardt's denim lifeless. Like they feel like the fact that it is, as I just mentioned, uh, it's so regular, it doesn't have that nuttiness and slubbiness that a lot of people really like in the denim. Uh, the fades take a really long time to come about and when you get them, they're not always high contrast, which a lot of people really like. It's a very, very clean aesthetic. So you have to kind of decide that you like that before you get into these jeans. Otherwise, it's possible a different brand might be for you. All right, those are my thoughts. My first pair of Iron Heart jeans, probably my first of many to come. Pretty cool jean, very nice, clean aesthetic, but you have to be pretty patient when you're breaking them in and waiting for them to fade. I wanna thank Ryan Hodges for his help with this review, by the way. He's a big denim nerd. He lives here in Brooklyn. He helped me out with some of the facts here. I put his Instagram in the description below if you wanna check him out. And I also put the written review with a bunch of photos as well in the description below as well. And uh, also make sure you subscribe because I got a whole lot more denim reviews and boot reviews and other men's fashion tips coming up.